All right, welcome back everyone. You got Danita and Cindy, and today we are in the podcast of Booty Bands More Than Fitness. Excited to bring you an awesome topic today that a lot of women are bringing up about what are boundaries, why do we need them, what are healthy boundaries, and what are some unhealthy boundaries. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast, and my goal is that I can add some value and contribute into your life today. So what a great topic today. I'm very excited to bring Cindy to the call. She knows a lot about this one. Um, I love it when it's when you kind of go through the trial and error of life and we have to find it out ourselves and now we can help share it amongst you. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, Cindy, tell us a little bit about uh, the starting of boundaries. Tell us what they are to begin with. Sure. Yeah. So boundaries are something that we all need. A lot of people initially think of boundaries as things that like shut people out or keep them away or draw a firm line in between you and someone else. And sometimes it has like a negative connotation in our mind if we don't really know what it is. But there's something that are so, so, so important for everybody to have. And there are ways to do it in a healthy way and ways, you know, that could maybe use a little work. So that's what we'll go over today. So as we're going through our self-love journey, some people call it healing journey or just self-work, whatever it is, it's basically getting to know yourself, letting go of all the things you're not to come to the core of who you are on the inside. So we get to the core of who we are by letting go of the things that were not or a false sense of identity. So we are whole and complete from the very beginning. No matter where we are on our healing journeys, we are always whole and complete. Boundaries are the things that protect that wholeness. And I heard it very beautifully put by actually one of my mentors and coaches that boundaries are where you end and where I begin. So you are whole and I am whole. And the thing in between is what protects that wholeness. Yeah. And you gave an actual, a great, uh, visual of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain that because a lot of people aren't going to see video. Yeah, 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 sure. So people on the video, I'll, I'll do it with my hands here, but on the podcast, imagine like two circles that you're making with your hands and side by side, this is me, this is you, right? We are whole and complete on our own. Unhealthy is where they overlap. So you can see like there's a circle in the middle of the two circles and that's where you aren't separating yourself from the relationships that you're in, whether it be family, friends, romantic, whatever it is, boss, coworker. If you are overlapping, you are taking on other people's emotions and you're kind of attached to them. So if they're high, you're high. If they're low, you're low, right? Where in reality, we need to stand firmly in who we are and our own emotions. So healthy boundaries are where we can connect to other people while holding on to ourselves. So we feel free expressing our opinions, even if they're different than that person that we're having the relationship with, and also accepting their perspectives, even if they're different than ours. So you get your views, you get your feelings, I get my views, I get my feelings. Neither one is right or wrong or takes precedent over the other. It's neutrality, right? You get to be you and I get to be me. I get to have an amazing interaction and relationship with you, but they do not overlap. We are both our individuals on our own. So let's go a little bit into what overlap really means. So what are maybe some Mm -hmm. examples, like you said, overlapping is kind of like when someone's high, it pulls you high. And when someone's Mm -hmm. low, it pulls you low. But what are maybe a little bit more details or specifics of that? I have a story, but I don't know if you have something too. Yeah. So that's called um, a porous boundary. So porous thinking of it like, imagine like a sponge, right? Like a sponge, you put it in water and it absorbs the water and then it also becomes half of that, right? It's like that. Let's say you have um, a partner or even a parent um, that is very highly emotional. They're like a roller coaster ride of emotions. And when they come home upset, they vent to you and you try and go and fix it. And you end up ditching all your things that you had on your to-do list. So I know women in the booty bands group were talking about health and fitness, right? Like, oh, I was supposed to do my meal prep and my laundry and I was going to do my workout, but my husband came home all frazzled and upset. So I threw my to-do list aside and now I'm catering to him. And now I'm stressed out because he put his stress on me, right? We have the option with boundaries to have a healthy conversation and put something in between that. So saying, look, I understand how you're feeling. I see you. I hear you. 
I'm going to take care of myself. So I have the energy and capacity to help you, but I have to take care of myself first. So that, that's what a healthy boundary would be. Porous would be dropping everything, catering to other people, and then you're left feeling depleted. Um, so that's really the difference of the overlap is taking on what's not ours, carrying those emotions and that weight that was never ours to carry. Yeah, I've got a client that's got, um, uh, well, we both have a client. So if you guys don't know, uh, Cindy and I do a mindset master class where we are so passionate about helping women see the blinders that are in their life that are stopping them from really getting to their goals. And this is just one of them, right? The boundaries is one of hundreds of other things that could be stopping you in your life. And so make sure to just uh, click the link below to be able to join that. Um, we do what's called weekly accountability every Wednesdays, where we take a group of women and we really talk about this stuff and it can go a little bit deeper into what you're going through and you can uh, sit and get a lot out of the call. So anyways, let's go back into this client that Cindy and I both have. Um, she has a really difficult time because her husband has some trauma of things being a perfect way. So he's a perfectionist and he comes home every day and he expects the expectations of the house has to be completely spotless. Now keep in mind this, this woman is a um, it, not a stay-at-home mother. She's a full-time employee and they have two children, two boys to be exact, which we know can be a lot messier than girls. And what happens is he comes home and he starts to say, Hey, look, I don't feel like you love me enough to the, the, why, why would the house be dirty? Like that shows me that you don't really care about my expectations of being in this house. And I feel like you don't love me. So what happens is he gets really upset and he just keeps kind of saying, you don't love me enough. And so then what she does is she shuts down. And she just feels like, oh my gosh, like I, 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 I'm doing everything I can. What, what am I so, oh man. And she, what she does is she internalizes all of it. And then what happens is she can't even function. She, she starts eating her emotions. She just starts feeling like, oh no, my, my marriage is getting worse. I'm not a good enough mom. I'm not a good enough wife. I can't clean the house. I don't do anything right. And so then she doesn't do any of her workouts. She doesn't focus on eating anything healthy and she's just gaining more and more weight. And now her health is at risk. And so we can see that exactly what you just said, a porous uh, boundary where she doesn't have a boundary. She's letting all of his past trauma or something that happened to him as a kid of the expectations of what he wants it to be pour over into her life. So tell us a little bit more about yeah. what you see on this. Yeah. I mean, you can perfectly hear that there, that he has this not enoughness story, right? Of, oh, you don't love me enough. And now she took on the story of not enoughness. So what a great response could be, and there are many, but it could be, hey, I love and cherish you so much that I want to show up as the best wife for you. I need to do X, Y, Z in order to have the best energy, in order to fully pour into you. And one of the quotes we used in our masterclass that women just absolutely loved, this is a mantra that I took on because, hey, we all have a little touch of codependency, especially as women. Um, I only pour from my overflow. So yes, we can give to others. Yes, we can be nurturing. Yes, we can be the best mom, sister, girlfriend, wifey, whatever you are, but we can do it only when we're full. So if we give to others first, it's like trying to fill a leaking bucket. You will never fill it. You have to pour from the overflow, fill yourself first, and then you can pour into others. So that's why our boundaries are so important. It's literally like patching up those holes in that leaking bucket. Yeah. And absolutely the reason why Booty Bands and Barbells creates a program like this for women is because now you can see with this client, it doesn't matter how many meal plans or how many workouts I give her, she is just completely sucked into mm -hmm. no boundaries with her husband and it creates uh, it creates it so she can't really get to her goals this way. And so now having a mindset program wrapped into this allows us to start going, oh my goodness, okay, Today, I learned about boundaries in this program. Okay, this is what I need to do to really start getting to my goals. Yeah, totally. And on the flip side of that, there's another type of boundary, which is called a rigid boundary, which is where we block input from other people. It's like almost too firm of boundary. So I wouldn't even call it a boundary. I'd call it a wall. <laughs> um, and it's where we hold our, ourselves back from other people's. We don't hear them. We think our opinion is the only one and we protect ourselves from other people getting too close. So we've had another client who voiced something very similar of, she didn't even want people looking at her. 
She built these walls in between people so no one could get too close because of her own limiting beliefs, like self-imposed limiting beliefs that she had on herself was actually keeping her in isolation. So it can go one way or the other. It can go extremely polar. Where we wanna be is like a health, healthy medium on the in-between. So that, again, I have my emotions. I'm entitled to my emotions, no matter what they are. I am entitled to my own beliefs and my own experiences, and so are you. They don't have to match perfectly at all. But you get to have yours and I get to have mine, and that's what healthy boundaries are. So are that the only two is the one that's the sponge and then the one that's rigid like a wall? Is there any others? So think of it kind of like um, uh, a scale. So uh, rigid's all the way on one side, porous is all the way on the other, and then healthy is right in between. So um, you can be anywhere along that scale, different, I guess, severities of it or extremes, but we never want to be on the extreme anywhere. We always want to be balanced, which is right there in the middle. So we might tinker one way or the other. It can rotate between the two, depending on your experiences or depending on the person you're interacting with. So it's really about becoming conscious of how you're relating to other people. So that's where in our masterclass, we take the women through those three phases. The first one is awareness. It's just becoming aware of where we're at and how we're acting and how we're interacting with people. So you can do this with yourself. Like think of the top five people in your life that you spend the most time with. How much am I influenced by what's going on with them? How much do they take away from what I want to do? If you look at your to-do list and you're not checking it off, where am I giving away my energy? Who am I giving it to? Is that what I want to be doing or do I feel obligated to be doing those things? Is it draining me or is it charging me up? And that's where we can start to figure out where we need boundaries and where we maybe have lacked them in the first place. And a huge reason that, uh, especially as women, then we're taught to be nurturing, we're taught to be mamas, good sisters, entertainers, hosts, all those things from a young age, we're conditioned to give, to give, to give, to give. And they don't teach us when we're young to fill ourselves first and give to others. So it's something a ton of women struggle with, a lot of men too, but mostly women. Um, we've just been raised like that. So it just takes taking your power back. And that's really what empowerment is. If you break down the word, it's embodying your power. Your power comes from inside of you. When we're giving it away to things outside of ourselves, we're disempowered. So bringing it back, knowing that the source is right here. You always got it. You are always whole. You are always complete. And those boundaries keep you from giving it away all the time. Yeah. Wow. Love it. Okay. So we, we know what is a boundary now. We know um, why we need them. We know what is a healthy boundary. So you, you just kind of covered that right now. Um, and I, I, and we know what unhealthy boundaries are. So um, anything else that you feel like um, about boundaries that we feel like we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think when, when we're first creating them for ourselves, uh, I know I experienced this and I hear a lot of other women think it too. It's like, you almost get this like guilt of like, how did I not know better? Oh my gosh, like I need to fix everything. And it's really like having no judgments of where you're at, knowing where you are is perfect. And we're always growing, evolving. And, and sometimes to be honest, growth ebbs and flows. Sometimes we make huge strides and then we feel like we went backwards a little bit and it's okay. It happens to everyone but you can never take away what you've learned. So every time we have this self growth and we feel like we regress, you really haven't because you're always learning about yourself. And it's about that bounce back time, like your reaction time when life happens and gets challenging and we fall down because we all do. It's the fact that we can jump back up a lot faster. So why we lack boundaries a lot of times in life is because we might have grown up in a chaotic environment where we had to give ourselves away to survive. So it could be like you had an alcoholic parent, maybe you dealt with um, a parent who had um, um, mental disorders, like maybe uh, personality disorders, bipolar, anything where you felt like you had to cater to that person to make things okay just to get by. A lot of people grow up in chaotic environments like that, even like maybe growing up in poverty or just really anything that feels like a stressor to you where you have to keep giving, 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 giving just to get by. And what it does is it trains us or conditions us unintentionally to endure. And we're not meant to go through our lives enduring we're supposed to fill ourselves up and thrive. 
So where are you enduring? Where are you giving too much of that away? And it's no one's fault. It's just where we're at. And we get to choose where we get to go from here. So getting aware of where we are, where we are without judgment and moving from a place of neutrality. Yeah, and I think the beautiful part about doing it with a group of women is that they can go, oh, wow, you're experiencing this too. You know, and that's, I think, what you're just saying there as far as, you know, the judgment on yourself, you start to recognize that you're not the only one going through this. And then it, it starts to take that judgment away, like you just said. I think that's something that's so beautiful doing it in a, with a, with a, a group. Um, mm-hmm. And especially being able to have that accountability every Wednesday, you can come in and I mean, there were some tears shed this last Wednesday of some major breakthroughs that were happening and how much they could all identify with each other on what that was and how that opened up another avenue for them. Like, it was just so powerful. It just gave me cold chills thinking about it. Oh, me too. And goosebumps the whole time on that call. (laughs) Yeah, it was so phenomenal, man. It was so, and, and even me, I'm starting to get influenced by it. I'm like, wait a minute, I can relate too, you know? And so it was just so cool to have this amazing unity of women that we could really focus on empowering one another as we focus on empowering ourselves. Uh, So beautiful, man. Um, What else? Is there anything else on boundaries that come to mind? Um, I think we've covered uh, the most part of it. Uh, We have some exercises that we do with the women in the masterclass on how to set them or what areas of life you can do. So the exercise we're going to do with the women is you draw a little picture of yourself in the middle, like a little stick figure, and then circles around it and fill in those circles with what your boundaries are. And there's a few areas of life. You can do them really for any, but the big pillars are emotional, which is how you feel. There's sexual um, or just um, physical touch. So how do you want to be touched, whether that's by you know, uh, like uh, platonic, like your friends touching you. Do you like that? Do you not? If it's sexual, how do you want to be touched? Um, Then there's relational. So who are you to me? What is the dynamic of our relationship? Um, And then there's spiritual. So what are your beliefs and how do you practice those? We all get to have our own and they're all okay. It's about respecting each other's and not trying to put yours on them or take it on. So those are the different pillars that we get to have the women invite the women into creating for themselves and really to think about it because we don't know until we become conscious of it. Yeah. Wow. So awesome. I, I loved the diagram that you gave today. It had such a visual on these um, bubbles and whether they're interlacing or if they're separate, like that really gave such a good visual and, and allows me to kind of see like, where am I interlacing? Where am I separate? Like, you know, cause there is, it's, it's not just interlacing. It's like, where are you creating that wall so that you're not getting any feedback from your life? You know, I've, and I've, um, I think we can all even recognize people around us that have either that wall um, that are just like, absolutely not not willing to take on any self-criticism or constructive criticism or anything, right? So what a, what a great analogy there to just uh, take back. And if any of you guys like writing notes, write this in your notes today. This might be something you can go back to and reflect on and, and, uh, and see how it can impact and improve your life where you're at. Awesome. Totally. And, and uh, last, just uh, remember that we have this uh, weekly accountability class. If you feel like you're going through something and you want a little handhold in as we guide you through whatever blinders you've got on in your life that you've got a goal ahead of you. And it just seems like, you know, that book on the shelf that you just keep hitting back and you can't seem to fully grasp that goal. You know, this will be a great time for you to um, really see what it is going on. So that way you can grab that book fully and which essentially is your goal, right? So cool. Make sure to go ahead and click the link um, down below. I will also post this in the podcast podcast notes. Um, thank you, Cindy, so much for being on today. What massive value I get all the time just by speaking to you. You're so blessed and obviously so Likewise. Beautiful. <laughs> all right. Well, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch up with you guys all later. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.